and it came with all the steel rods, all the plastic pieces, all the electronics, everything. Um, and I had to learn how to solder, um, which I'd failed at many times in the past. Um, but I spent about an hour watching some YouTube videos, and actually soldering is really not as hard as it looks. Of course, if you just take a soldering iron and a board and try to desolder something, it tends to go wrong, and that was where I went wrong, because that's my introduction to soldering, was, hey, I want to get that bit off that board, and no, not that easy at all. Um, but once you've got the, the couple of little tricks, Soldering actually isn't that hard. Uh, I recommend if you haven't ever soldered anything, uh, get down to your local house space, talk to people there. People will show you basically two basic techniques for soldering, and it really isn't hard at all. Um, and there's not a lot of soldering goes into one of these. Um, basically, there's a few points on the board where you have to solder, and the plug where you plug the power supply in is pretty much it in, the, uh, in most of the kits. Um, so yeah, that's the, the 3D printer I have. It has a, a pretty damn small build area. Uh, not as small as the little cupcake that's up, upstairs. And I recommend you go and have a look at the 3D printing that's going on upstairs. They're building a 3D printer this weekend. Uh, and there's a little cupcake, which is one of the first uh, printers. Um, so I bought my kit from uh, D-Maker. Uh, Retro Pro, which was eMaker, which is a company that's run part by the um, person who basically started the Retro project, um, and they're down in Bristol. Uh, so, you know, actual UK engineering, and um, yeah, wonderful. So, yeah, I go back to, to them as a company because it's like, right, I can get a kit for 400 quid, and it's supporting the people who started this whole 3D printing revolution, and um, yeah, um, so Adrian Valia is the guy who basically started the Redback project. Um, as I said, small build area, uh, 105 by 105 mil, um, by about 70 if I'm lucky, depends on the model and the height. Um, so yeah, it was about 400 quid, probably not going to have this. Um, the company's down in Bath, they sent the kill, and it came in a box about that big, and I thought, oh my god, what if I just spend 400 quid on a little box that big? But then I thought, you know, I'll spend 400 quid on a box that big, so yeah, fair enough. Um, I did spend a little more than that, because I didn't have a soldering iron, but it was variable temperature, which is kind of important. Um, I did manage to do some damage as I was building it because it was my first build, so yeah. Um, I would say probably an extra hundred on top in terms of tools and replacement bits. Um, the kit, you pre order the kit, um, and again, being Yorkshire, handing over money and not actually getting anything is you know, really scary. Uh, but they did turn up, and yay! Um, it also has the electronics, um, which it comes with a, what's known as a Sanguilulu, uh, which is the, it's an Arduino-based electronics, um, which has uh, stepper motor controllers, um, and those are about 15 quid a piece, um, and the motors themselves. So, uh, what have I printed? Um, well, yeah, battery pie cases, mounts, replacement parts, which, as I say, I'm like, extremely excited when the printer was doing that. Um, a spool holder, um, because I get my plastic from a place called Fabadashery. They do loads and loads of different colours, um, but they come in just a bundle of plastic, which then gets tangled, and it's horrendous when you plastic gets tangled because you just end up trying to untangle it and if you think headphone wires are difficult it, it, I'm, I'm sure this shares some DNA with headphone wires because you know, it, it just can tangle just by looking at it. Um, 
Dali Bottle Opener. This is one of my favourite pieces, um, which is actually actually uses a coin as the um, solid part. Um, a bit of one time. Um, and yeah, I spoke, spoke to a friend of mine and said, Yeah, I'm coming for, for your partner's birthday. Uh, what's his favourite sci fi type stuff? And she said, Oh, it's Doctor Who. And I went, Excellent print. And as a birthday present, he was over the moon with it. Um, Com badges, psycho badges, um, all sorts of geeky. Uh, sigils that you can print. Um, little toys, this is a, um, one of those sort of puzzles that you can print that takes a bit of getting into but collapses into parts and then it's difficult to put that together again. Um, I printed for a friend of mine, um, she got a Munchkin board game and the central part where the cards go was not separated at all. So I printed there's some card separators that basically T pieces that stop the cards from um, from sliding it out. Um, I'll uh, if, if you pop upstairs to the 3D printing place, we've got some other parts up there. I don't have many parts with me to um, to show. Um, good old other um, common first print is the other. Um, there is a lot of designs out there um, on a website called Thingiverse. Um, because it's open hardware, uh, there's a lot of people out there designing things, but uh, they, um, the open source hardware people tend to share their designs. So that, you can just download it and print it, literally, um, just like that. There's even a printable quadcopter. Uh, yeah, uh, that, is, that is very, very cool. Um, it's just one of the many, many things. Um, that's a fractal based um, vase um, for putting dry flowers in. There's just a really wide variety of different types of things that you can print. So, can anyone print one? Yes. I would say, yes, anyone can, can build one. Um, yeah, it took me three days and then magic spilled smoke escaped from the chips and I had fire. I never knew 3D printers could print fire, but you know, <laughs> that's the learning process. Um, it's not as simple as building a PC, because you do have your bits of soldering. Learning how to level the bed um, was basically <coughs> just trial and error. Um, a lot of it does feel a bit like, okay, try this. It may work. Um, but you get there in the end, you do get a feel for, for it as you're building it. And the build instructions are great at the beginning. They start by showing you exactly what you want to put where. Um, and then obviously the people who are writing the instructions get a bit excited because theirs is starting to take shape and the instructions kind of go by the wayside. Similar to programming, its documentation does take a lot of work. Um, some models are uh, easier to build than others. Um, I'm building Mendel mats at the moment, um, and one for the hack space as well. Um, they're uh, much easier to put together, uh, but the parts for them are a bit more difficult to print. Uh, the Prusa that's being built upstairs is a cut down Mendel, um, which uses much, much fewer parts than the original. Um, and people are always refining the 3D printers, um, so there's, there's always a new model that's coming out. The support is absolutely amazing. Um, IRC, I've never been in an IRC room where they've been as friendly, um, apart from possibly some of the half space IRC rooms. Um, one of my parts broke um, whilst I was building and I thought, oh, that's it. I can't build the printer. I could replace this part if I could build the printer. Um, and within five minutes of me saying that this part's broken, I got um, offers from three different people across Europe offering to print and send me that part at no cost. Um, just 
because they want to see you succeed and they want to see you uh, manage to get a 3D printer. Um, there's loads of wiki info and forums and blogs, loads and loads of blogs. There's an aggregator called Planet Hancock um, and that just pulls in all the blogs and uh, there's a whole load of blogs out there. It's impossible to keep up with to be honest. Next big thing, that's the one that I'm building now, which is aluminium base. And we've got one for the hack space that I'm building and a personal one. Um, it's going to have a build area that's about triple the build area of the current one. So I'm going to get about 300 mil cubed out there. Um, and because it's made out of aluminium, it scales better, so it's more sturdier. And the more sturdy the, the frame, the faster you can print. Um, <coughs> then I'm going to be doing an even smaller one, which is a projector based one which projects onto resin. Uh, this technique is being um, perfected at the moment, but you can see how that's um, a normal refract print. Um, not a very good refract print, I must admit, I mean, it's, I've done better than that. But, as you can see on the right, the resin printing is just so much better. Um, you can get down to a foul resolution on, on the, mic, on the uh, printing on the DLP. Quick touch on other materials. So you can see the plastic that's going round. Uh, that's um, uh, bioplastic, PLA. Uh, the common alternative is ABS plastic. Um, but they are now working on various different heads to do um, basically anything that's um, almost liquid. So anything paste extruded. So ceramics, chocolate, icing, you know it. Um, they're, they're working on it. Metals are a little bit more difficult. The open source hardware ones don't tend to go into metals because it tends to be powder and shoot a laser at it until it turns into metal, which tends to be very expensive. It's a really cool video on YouTube of someone printing in a desert from sand using a, um, a lens um, to actually 3D print glass from sand. Um, so yeah, chocolate, ceramics, um, they're trying to get them to fire. Tortillas, someone printed with um, paste, tortilla paste, and then cook them. Uh, Wow. Um, Shapeways is quite a service you can send off your 3D designs and get them printed <coughs> in metal um, and various different um, manufacturers. Dual extrusion um, is one of the things that I'm working on on my own uh, new printer, which means you can print two different coloured plastics at the same time. Um, open hand hardware is just amazing. Um, the glass is a desert video. The open hardware stuff that I've been following is also someone working on a nuclear reactor, uh, which sounds scary, um, but it's actually a nuclear fusion. And he, they're actually working out that they can make a nuclear reactor, um, if they scale it up, that will um, produce um, proper, decent um, power output, more than you put into it. Uh, I'm also working on a, um, a 3D scanner using the Connect, uh, which is also very, very cool. Um, so you 3D photocopy basically, just copy something. Um, and I think we're pretty much out of time, but we've got three minutes or so. So, uh, any questions? Yeah. <coughs> How much is the plastic then to put into it? Right, the plastic is about um, 20 quid of reel usually, um, about 100 meter reel is about uh, 20, 22 quid. Um, I would say though that the plastic cost is kind of irrelevant. Um, I was at the Manchester Maker Fair and the, um, one of the kids came up to the 3D printing thing and said, uh, oh, can I buy that? And there's the guy with the 3D printer said, uh, yeah, um, it's about 50 pence worth of plus plastic there, uh, so for you, a fiver. <laughs> and I completely agree with him because that Dalek that's been going round, that took an hour and a half to print. 
So it's not so much the cost of the plastic, it's the cost of your time. Right. Because you can only print one thing at once if you've got one printer. And you can only do so many things. I mean, mine's been doing it, sat there full time printing parts for the next printer <coughs> for the past about two months. Um, it's, it's a lot. I mean, if you work from home and you have your 3D printer by your computer, you can do it. But, oh, if you live alone, you can have it printing overnight. But, you know, if you don't live alone, then printing stuff overnight or leaving it to print whilst you go to work is a bit dicey because if it falls over, if it jams, you might then come home to you know, a big gooey plastic mess on the floor and possibly the fire brigade shouting at you. Um, so yeah, the, the plastic is not that much, that expensive. Like how much went into that garlic? Um, probably about 70 p worth. Oh right. Yeah, somewhere around there. So it's, it's not a lot. Um, it's worth checking your models though. I downloaded a companion cube that has gears and um, didn't actually check what output size it was <laughs> and it's eaten up about 25 quid worth of plastic. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's big. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, I'd rather not print it that size. <coughs> Um, I'd have rather scaled it down. Um, also, it sliced a bit weird, so it's got multi shells. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of the time you can, if it's something that's just a toy to give someone, um, you'd scale it down um, to to print off more. Um, there's also plating software uh, that will allow you to build up an entire plate. Of, Models, um, but that again it depends on if you need need it to be a specific size. You can't do that, uh, like with the Raspberry Pi case. <coughs> Obviously, kind of pointless printing a smaller than us. <laughs> We're out of time. Okay, thank you very much for your time, guys. Thank you.